Hey Rockers, this is Ian, and I'm here with Sam for our season premiere of Indie Rockers Ball. That's right, and I'm so excited. I can't believe we're already on our ninth season. I know. I know this season's gonna be just as rockin' as the previous oh, ones. Ian, really? We talked about this on the okay, first episode. Listen, listen, I swear, you're, you're just gonna, you're gonna come at me with this? It's the first episode, and listen, you're just gonna- Listen, we talked okay, about bro, this. Okay, bro, who do you not, even, no, who do you even no, know here? Who do you no, know here? it's cringy. Okay, no listen. one likes it. Pop star Sam Smith has recently come out as non-binary and has asked their fans to refer to them with they, them pronouns and not he, him pronouns. Smith wrote on Instagram, after a lifetime of being at war with my gender, I've decided to embrace myself for who I am inside and out. I've been very nervous about announcing this because I care too much about what people think. This recent announcement has, has meant a lot to the LGBTQ community. At London's first trans pride event, speaker Aisha Brown spoke on Smith's announcement saying, we definitely need more non-binary people in the public space being visibly non-binary. As for their fans, Smith is very understanding and he hopes this will be a learning experience for everyone. They wrote, I understand there will be many mistakes and misgendering, but all I ask is you please, please try. I hope you can see me like I see myself now. Thank you. I am at no stage just yet to eloquently speak at length of what it means to be non-binary, but I can't wait for the day that I am. For now, I just want to be visible and open. Amazon is now offering free music streaming services in the US. However, the company is not making a very big deal about the announcement. The service became available last week exclusively through Alexa, the Amazon voice assistant. The company released a blog post last Thursday stating, since the launch of Amazon Music, customers have been able to use the simplicity and magic of voice to request music in fun, innovative ways. And so, beginning today, customers in the US who do not yet have a Prime membership or a subscription to Amazon Music Unlimited will now be able to listen to ad-supported selections of top playlists and stations for free with Amazon Music on compatible Alexa-enabled devices. Pretty cool if you ask me. However, Amazon still offers ad-free music services through the Amazon Prime membership, which comes to about 119 per year for 2 million songs, as well as Amazon Music Unlimited, which costs $7.99 a month and offers access to 50 million songs. So, if you have the Amazon Alexa, make sure to take advantage of this opportunity to stream millions of songs for free. Ian, is this real? Can I really stream music for free? Yeah, you can, Sam. If you have Alexa, you can use Amazon's streaming service for free. That's so cool. Hey, Alexa, play Rockstar by Nickelback. Um, Sam? What? You, you realize that you need to have, like, an Alexa to play? You can't just, like, ask Alexa on our crew to play the song for you. Oh, I see. Well, Alexa, can you still put the song on? No, no, no Sam, listen. Okay, we'll get to it later. Anyways, rockers, make sure to stay tuned because up next is our first ever music lesson with Jet Baumgartner. What's going on, rockers? This week on a music lesson, we're going to be learning Pardon Me by Incubus, just the intro. All right, so when you start off with the actual intro, you're gonna be holding basically one chord and you're only gonna change one variation of it and you play that about four times. So you're gonna to wanna to put your ring finger on the fourth fret of the A string, your pointer finger on the second fret of the D string, and then your pinky finger on the sixth fret of the G string. And you basically, you hit, the pattern is, you start like this, you hit those first three, and then you go back. So you hit the open B, and you go back to the G. So that's five all together, see so it goes. And then once you do that, um, yeah, you hit the, you go back to the, uh, the D and the G string. So all together it's seven. So it's three refrains of seven. So you put it all together and it's basically the same thing, but the only difference is, is on every other one you take off your ring finger over here. So instead of it's that. And then on the very end, on the very fourth one, instead of playing those last three notes again, you just strum it open. So when you put it all together, it's like Next part when you get into it, this is the only other part that's part of the intro, is you want to bar your first two fingers 
on the fourth fret of the E and the A string, and then put your ring and pinky fingers on the D and the G string on the sixth fret. So it hits that like heavy power chord that's like and then you hit that, you go like that, and then you go down to, it's like a version of an A, but you only have your uh, middle and ring finger on the second fret of the, uh, the D and G. So it's So once you do that, you do that twice, so you go. And then right before you're about to hit the last one, you hit an open, open E, which is just the top open string, and then your uh, pointer finger on the second fret of the A string. And then for the very end of it, you do the same thing again, so you go. And instead of going back down to that open A, the last time, you're gonna slide up to the seventh and ninth uh, frets on the thing and hold the same chord. So you hit this once, and then you push these fingers up two strings on the very last one. So that's just everything. So all together, the whole intro is like this. That is how you play the intro to Pardon Me by Incubus. We will see you next week, rockers. Hey music fans, do you know that the Grateful Dead have teamed with Z2 Comics to create a biographical graphic novel? It will hit shelves in, in early 2020 and come with an exclusive recording featuring previously unreleased music. According to Rollingstone.com, Grateful Dead Origins will focus on the band's early days and, per a statement, their transformation from a bar band performing as the Warlocks, becoming the creator of their own sound and forefathers for the jam band culture. Chris Miskiewicz will write the book while Noah Van Skyver will illustrate it. The deluxe edition of Grateful Dead Origins will be released in hardcover and come with a special vinyl recording featuring a selection of unreleased Grateful Dead music from the era the book covers. A track list has yet to be announced. The package will also include three art prints signed by the book's creators. A standard edition will be released in a soft cover and come with a downloadable version of Grateful Dead music from the era. Are you excited about this graphic novel? Let us know what you think on Twitter with the hashtag MusicRelease at IRBTV. He may only be a few years into his career, but Post Malone is already one of the biggest icons in the music world right now. So it's no surprise that his new release, Hollywood's Bleeding, debuted atop the Billboard 200. Post Malone kicked off the Hollywood's Bleeding era with the single Sunflower, which at the time of its release was only accompanied on the soundtrack that accompanied the animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The track went all the way up to number one on the Hot 100. But not all of his songs on the album have the pop kind of feel that Sunflower does. Throughout the album, Post Malone seems to somehow put a different vibe into almost every song. For example, the song Take What You Want is an excellent song that opens with a guest appearance by Ozzy Osbourne. It also features some deep echo Travis Scott in the background, thus making a vibe that feels much darker than the song Sunflower. With four top 10 hits already to its credit, it's no surprise that Hollywood's Bleeding debuts at number one and is praised by many individuals. Overall, Post Malone seems to have another very big success in the music scene under his belt. I really like Post Malone's new album. Me too, although I'm a little disappointed that some people don't even know who Ozzy Osbourne is. You're telling me. And how about the Grateful Dead releasing a comic book? That's such a cool and creative idea. I can't wait to check it out. Me too. Plus, I think it's super cool that they're attaching a downloadable version of the music from the era. That's so cool. It really ties the whole thing together. I couldn't agree more. Anyway, rockers, make sure to stick around because up next is Rockers Review. What's up, rockers? My name's Ian. I'm here with Liam. We're here to uh, do a Rockers Review on the new album by Post Malone, Hollywood's Bleeding. I'm actually so excited to review this album because, like, it dropped literally on Thursday. I'm actually kind of upset, though, because I got a radio show on Thursday and they literally dropped it, like, a couple hours after, and I was so mad because that, that whole album is phenomenal. Yeah, no, I would say that for sure. A um, lot of features on this album. Oh, yeah. uh, any, any of them your favorite? Like, uh, I know there's probably one you want to get into specifically. Oh, yeah. Go so ahead. 100% Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne is definitely, if not one of the godfathers of heavy metal, as you know, 
we all well know and love. Although some people do say that, you know, who's Ozzy Osbourne? I'm very glad that, you know, people made, you know, Post Malone made him famous, which angers me every time I see a post about that. Post Malone, huh? But <laughs> anyway, they, I just love the whole album entirely, especially with Sunflower as well, which is on the Spider-Verse album and hit number like, hit the, you know, billboard, like even just on the soundtrack for Into the Spider-Verse before it became on the yeah. album. But that, you know, it's so cool to me how, you know, the kind of vibe for every single song just shifts. Like yeah. you have such a happy, fun, like pop song, like Sunflower, and then you have literally the song with Ozzy Osbourne that gives you like a pumped up kind of, gives you more of a darker feel. And I just love how the yeah. whole album has a different feel. No oh, absolutely. The There's a total, like, like you just said, total shift in vibes throughout all the songs. But um, I will say that in the past, like I, I really like Stoney, the great album by Post Malone, but oh, I yeah. think that it's one thing he's you know very popular, very hyped up as an artist. But I think with this, he really lived up to the hype. He had, like I was saying, a ton of futures or futures features. My bad. Yeah, future is a feature. Is a feature. <laughs> so um, he has Halsey, Future, uh, DeBaby, who's going to be at IUP. So that's pretty cool. That's Probably do a review on that. That is exciting. Um, Ozzy Osbourne, as we said. Um, I'm really excited though. What were some of your favorite ones besides Sunflower? Do you have any other favorites, any other standouts from the album? I mean, I haven't really dug into the album a lot as you have, but like I said, the one with Ozzy Osbourne is definitely one that I've had on loop for the past, like, since it's been released, you know? Like, I literally would listen to it and I'd be like, I gotta listen to this again because it's such a short song for like, how great it is for yeah. me. I literally have it on repeat, like well, just constant. Well, when you put the Prince of Darkness as one of your features, you gotta let the song run at least five oh, minutes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> But um, I'd say one of my favorite songs is uh, Circles, as well as the title track, Hollywood's Bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Circles like is like the sad boy anthem on this track, oh, yeah. or on this album. Uh, it's the one sad boy track, and I, I really do, I personally vibe with it, like I really like it. Um, I like how it encapsulates a lot of different emotions. Like you said, like the vibe with every song, kind of is different, but the, the formula kind of stays the same with Post Malone. Like, I'm sad, here's why, let me talk about my feelings real quick. Um, but this, he did kind of break that format and I really did enjoy this album. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that he didn't actually put more on the album. Yeah, I mean, I wish he did because like I said, almost every single song is like a jam and you can literally blast it no matter, you know, it's literally one song for every mood that you're feeling. No yeah, matter who you are, sure. there's at least one song on that album that you can vibe with. And I think that's really, re you know, unique for Post for like, so any artist to do that because when you usually have you know any kind of artist they usually have like a specific sound yeah. and there's a specific following for that sound you know like so there are always some complaints for example acdc although i'm going a little off track they have the same so yeah. many albums but a lot of people complain they sound the same they sound the same yeah post malone that he has a new sound for every single song on this album it's yeah. new and it's fresh and it doesn't feel like you're listening to the same person yeah. depending on what song you click on yeah and i like how with that he can kind of bring in all these like different like just like you said with different vibes like i said you can bring in uh, a, a mass amount of people. Like I know everyone from kids that I go to like punk shows with to my resident sad boys and uh, everyone in between. Um, you know, you like top 40 pop, you'll like Post Malone. It's kind of, it's nice that he kind of encapsulates like that huge audience because it's something that everybody can get to know yeah. and something everybody can kind of, um, kind of get together. It's kind of like a togetherness thing. So yeah. one thing I'm very excited though, I was very excited about for this album was that he didn't delay it for months and months and months. Because if you remember with uh, Beer Bongs and Bentleys, like that album was delayed for so long. It was supposed to release in, what, January two years ago? And it, it was like wait until the end of the summer. And especially, like I said, for this album that I was saying before, is like everyone can vibe with it, no matter yeah. what kind of person you are and you know what you listen to. Like I don't really listen to rap a whole lot and I can still vibe with like half the songs on that album. But I do think that is all the time we have left. Do you have any yeah. final thoughts on anything? Uh, I don't have many besides everybody should go out and give this album a listen. If you haven't, I'm pretty sure if you won't love the whole thing, you'll love at least one song. Uh, again, I am Ian. This and is I'm Liam. Liam. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and uh, this has been Rocker's Review. We'll see you guys next time. See you then. While fans seem to be super excited about the Blink-182 and Little Wayne tour, it seems there's been some altercations recently and, thro and throughout the length of the tour. Starting off in July, when the rapper walked off the stage a few songs into his set and threatened to drop off the tour, he later clarified on Twitter that he would be continuing the tour. Later that month, he canceled another show last minute due to feeling under the weather. Then, in August, the rapper canceled the Irving date due to issues with the plane. However, Wayne's most recent cancellation in St. Louis was due to him being allegedly kicked out of his hotel. Wayne tweeted saying that the show was canceled and alluded to a police altercation, however he provides no more details. 
Probably one of the most explosive tour announcements of 2019 came to all of us on September 10th, where Green Day, Weezer, and Fall Out Boy all announced a combined tour spanning through the summer of 2020. Along with these three iconic bands, the Los Angeles band The Interrupters are also on the tour. They will be the first to play every single night, then followed by Weezer, Fall Out Boy, and Green Day to headline the show. To promote the tour, all three bands release new songs. Green Day's song, Father of All, comes from their upcoming album of the same name, which arrives in February. Weezer has also released End of the Game from their upcoming LP, Van Weezer, which is also set to arrive next May. And Fall Out Boy has released their new song, Dear Future, Hands Up, featuring Wyclef John for their upcoming compilation, Greatest Hits, Believers Never Die, Volume 2. The hype leading to this concert is already outstanding in such a short amount of time, and we cannot wait to see how this tour turns out for them. OMG, I am so excited for this tour. Me too. I can't believe we'll have a chance to finally see all of these great bands at once. I know. I'll have to get my ticket ASAP. Same. However, I'll probably hold off on getting tickets for Lil Wayne shows. Yes, he does not seem very reliable. Anyways, rockers, don't go anywhere because up next is Check This Out. What's up guys, welcome to Check This Out. Today we have EJ Fabaszewski playing some original songs for us. So uh, take it away, EJ. This is sunglasses. Sing about the flowers on the hill, how life's so happy. The wind is blowing all through your hair Oh, it looks so nappy It's nice to know when you're thinking of me Cause I'm thinking about you constantly Your smile's so bright that I need sunglasses I hope that you see me in the same I'm kidding, no I'm not Please take those things off Let's sing about how all this is a dream Though I really hope that it isn't But as long as you're in it I don't care You should probably get those things out of that I need sunglasses I hope that you see me in the same light but maybe not you don't look good in sunglasses I'm kidding no I'm not please take those things off This song is called A Million Times. I have the words, I just don't know how to say them. Can't to believe them if I can't understand up. Do you see what I am hearing? Of course you don't, because you hear with your eyes closed. Look with your ears plugged. I wonder where you've gone, because you're far from here. And I, 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 I try to miss. I could ever relive this Cause I know that we know that you know Absolutely nothing about me Don't know how you've gotten this far But I know it wasn't by car Cause you don't 
don't got one of those and I, I, I I've tried a million times Just to get things right It never goes quite right I'm probably gonna give up soon But that's between me and you I've got lots of things to do And I don't need I'm probably gonna give up soon, but that's between me and you. I've got lots of things to do, and I don't need your problems, too. I gave the world, you gave me 15 minutes. I don't think that I could ever relive this. Thank you. Uh, next up, I have a cover, and it's you. Got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead, when you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed, just remember what your pal said. Yeah, you. Troubles, I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together, we see it through. Yeah, you've got a friend in me. Yeah, you've got a friend in me. How's it going, rockers? You just heard some original songs and a cover by E.J. Fabischewski. I'm actually with her now. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit like her writing process, what she's been into, and uh, any upcoming stuff that she'll be uh, performing or any shows. So, E.J., how's it going? You ready for another season of IRB? I believe so. I'm glad I get to start this one off, too. It's oh, fantastic. Cool. <laughs> I love that. So tell me a little bit about the songs. I've never heard those ones before. Tell me a little bit about the ones um, I've heard. <laughs> the first song that I sang today was Sunglasses, and that was pretty much about how you see cool people or like and then they wear sunglasses that are ugly. That's literally it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> just about it. Just supposed to be like a dumb EJ song. I categorize as, as it is because it's just like, oh, here's a song. Also, here's a joke. Laugh at it. Why catch my breath? Because I have asthma. Like, that's the main <laughs> gist of it. Because the one, the chorus is like, oh, uh, I'm kidding when I say they're ugly. But no, I'm not. Like, take them off. And then it, like people usually like chuckle a little bit so that I get a chance to breathe. Well, if I know anything about you, you could write a song about just about anything. Like <laughs> I, I could try. say, write a song about going, you know, moving to Antarctica and you've never Movie. been to Antarctica. <laughs> but you, you write a song about it. I would attempt. So that second one, tell me a little bit, that seemed a little more serious, a little more the, heartfelt. So yeah, tell me a little about that. The Million Times did too. I was watching New Girl. <laughs> And there was a problem with relationships because I've never had a relationship, so I can't really speak for it. But I was watching it off the TV show and I took it off of her emotions. But then I, again, I couldn't make it an EJ song without something dumb in it. So I was just like, oh, you're going to get far, but huh, not with a car because you don't have one. And again, like people like, oh, <laughs> and then I can breathe. <laughs> so so like what that. you're saying is your, your subtle humor in the songs, even if they are serious, is basically just an excuse to catch your breath yeah, and while everyone like, else laughs. <laughs> and because I like like bad dad jokes. Like I really like. Bad no, jokes. that's perfect. I remember um, it was last fall when I saw you at open mic night. Yeah. I was like, first off, EJ can sing, and second off, the songs were hilarious. Yeah. So I, I love them. I remember uh, it started to cut you off, I guess. But no, the you're good. one you came in one of my classes and you were like, you you remind me of Bo Burnham, and I, that literally I wrote on that energy for six months. Like I was like, <laughs> heck yeah. Well, glad that something I said, you know, positively impacted your writing process oh, and your uh, <laughs> your performance. Speaking of performances, uh, tell me a little bit about you. Do some like open mic nights, some like different gigs back home. I know yeah. you're from Millvale, so tell me a little bit about that. Anything um, coming up? 
Yeah, actually, next Sunday, which I think is the 22nd. I'm not positive, but I'm doing Lady Fest, which is really, really cool. It's like, oh, nice. this is the third annual year that they're having it, but it's just girls and like punk bands or acoustic people. And they, for three days, they have a Pittsburgh festival. It's not the biggest yet, but like it could be something. Yeah. And they have me opening for the Sunday stage at Hambones, which is in Lawrenceville. And I've actually been there for acoustic brunches. They have those over that's the summer. Awesome. I also, you want to hear something else that's really, really cool. And for I was sure. really excited. I got a gig at a Giant Eagle, which is a grocery store. Didn't, don't you mention think, Giant Eagle yes, in one of your songs? that's exactly it. The kid, I uh, saw him at another open mic, and he knew my one song, Minor Inconveniences, which is in my last IRB. I say there was a line about Giant Eagle and not having exact change. It just sucks. It's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> and because he remembered that lyric, he's like, wait, do you want to like do a gig at Giant Eagle? And I was like, absolutely. So I'm there, I'm like, guys, I didn't write this song for this, but like, this is perfect. And they're all guys just wanting to get their soup. But then there was this baby who was super excited. I'm like, Oh, this is so cute. And it just made me really happy. But again, some people were not feeling. I was like, Giant Eagle. And then for a minute, I thought he might be kidding. Like, ha ha, like, go to the Giant Eagle. Oh, no, big, big prank. I walked to Giant Eagle with my guitar, you know? <laughs> I love that. But like, but, for everybody else, it was, they, so you performed Minor Inconveniences in yes, a Giant Eagle. Yes, I did. OK, so what, what you're getting at here is that you were performing in front of food and you know what they had there <laughs> so while other people were just trying to shop you in and of yourself were being a minor inconvenience and you were in giant eagle so that all just came full circle it did right? it did indeed and people were trying to get their ways but the few people that were standing and watching were just like do you want to hear a funny story too absolutely okay so i had my friend my best friend alexia and then my brother there right for me because i'm like guys i'm not gonna just sing in giant eagle with nobody there not that it matters, but it's a little <laughs> awkward, you know what yeah. I mean? So my brother's standing there, and uh, a guy comes up to him. I see him as I'm singing. I think it was sunglasses, but I'm singing, and he goes up. He goes, do you know her? And Bobby's just like, oh, uh, oh. Uh. I'm like, I couldn't yell at him because I'm saying, like, Bobby, you're my brother. Tell him about me, OK? <laughs> Like, like shout me out, like yeah, something yeah, a little just, subtle. Like, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, her, I'm her sister, I'll probably, you know, just like something. <laughs> just something, anything. But so, that was highlight of the summer. I was going to say, I really enjoyed your performance today, but there was one thing that I needed to bring up in this. Tell me about your cape. <gasps> my cape? Because that caught my eye. <laughs> Guys, look at it. It's an alligator or a crocodile, either or, but it's my favorite thing in the whole entire. Would you like, would you like to hold it? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Can sure. I, don't, don't drop it. I won't. <laughs> no, but this is actually really cool. I've never seen anything like this. Uh, also, I'm not a big guitar, guitarist myself, so I That's mean. That's fair. But this is actually really funny. I think it fits like your like performance yeah. and how, how you kind of hold yourself when you perform. I think it's funny. It's just zany enough to be yeah. just like, this is EJ. That's yeah. perfect. Well, like I'll sing a song and then in between a gig, like if I'm using the capo, it's not like an awkward minute where I'm like have to put it on the thing. It's like, hey, this is an alligator or a crocodile. I don't know. And then I just put it on and keep going. Because the dad jokes only get me too far. You know what I mean? You need to have some prop <laughs> comedy in there yeah. too. Well, because sometimes I'd be like, oh, I ate a watch. It was time consuming. That's the go-to. Oh, no. <laughs> but then the people are like, oh. And then I can usually feel the crowd too. Because if they're not into it at all, I'm like, all right, we're going to not sing a song that talks about Giant eagle, we're yeah. sing something else for the audience. But if they're laughing, I'm like, all right. You, you, once you once you got them, they're like putty. Yeah. In your hand. Like oh, once you yeah. once you got them molded <laughs> to what you want, you're like, I know what direction I'm taking yeah. this. That's fantastic. It's, it's pretty useful. So tell me, like, what's next? Are you writing more? Are you uh, are you planning like more gigs or what's going on? Um, I'm just trying to get whatever gigs I can around and always writing stuff. I was trying to do that and learning new things because for my YouTube channel, I upload every Friday and I've been sticking to that for almost two years. I was like, I got a lot of videos. We're getting there. So what is uh, what is your YouTube? Just so you can kind of give it's yourself a little promotion. E J Fabischewski. My last name's super long, but I'll spell it really quickly. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. F A B I S Z E W S K I. Perfect. So <laughs> if that, I think that's all the time we got, but uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks. This was Check This Out, and we'll see you next time. You know, EJ never ceases to amaze me. I know, we are definitely starting the season off right. And let's give Jed a hand for his first ever music lesson segment. Nick Dark will be so proud. <sighs> Anyways, rockers, make sure to tune in next week for the latest in music. That's right. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media at IRBTV or at Indie Rockers Ball to keep updated with even more news. See you next week, rockers.